Welcome back to 30 apps in 30 days. Today is day 16, we're over the halfway mark. We're diving into something a little bit chunky. We're diving into the world of video editing. So stay tuned, today is gonna be a good one. If it's not deployed by midnight in nine and a half hours, then I gotta spin the forfeit wheel. We're gonna build clips, we're gonna build Opus clips. Okay team, it's time to lock in. So it's just churning away right now. It's not what I wanna be doing right now. My eyes are super tired. This would take dev teams a long time, even to get this basic workflow down. I think I sat down three hours ago, so we're just going to do a quick deployment. If you are new to this series, then yes, as I said, we are shipping an app every six for the 30 days, and we're documenting the whole thing. When we're posting a video every day, so do subscribe so you don't miss any of the next episodes. And if you've been watching along so far, thank you for watching. We just hit over 2k subs, which is really sick. Before this series started, I was literally on like 500 subs, so that's a nice bit of growth there. Okay, team, let's get into it. So in the same way that when we're vibe coding apps every day, we're running into problems. We're running into problems with design, with documentation, with the, with domain name finding. And these problems then give us ideas of what we can build to help ourselves. And then if we're solving a problem for ourselves, then we're probably going to solve that for other people. And because I'm making a video every single day, I'm running into a bunch of these problems as well when it comes to editing, pre-processing content, packaging, thumbnails, titles, everything, you name it. We could probably build the rest of the challenges apps just in this space. Not to mention I worked at video editing SaaS for four years before kicking off this YouTube channel. So I'd like to know, know a couple of things about video editing. I've spoken to a bunch of users as well whilst I was there. So the question is, what do we jump into? Because we can't solve the world's problems just now, unfortunately. It's already 2 p.m. So let me get to the drawing board and figure out what things I'd like to build in the space. And then we can pick one and then dive into it and do a bit of a speed build today to see where we can get to. As the rules are, we must push this to prod. We can't just show you a demo here on the channel and say, that's all good. If it's not deployed by midnight in nine and a half hours, then I've got to spin the forfeit wheel back in a second. Anyway, let me get back to you in a second. Okay, so we wanted to do a bit of vibe writing, so we came over to rawtyping.com. That really gets us locked in. If you haven't watched that video, it's an app that deletes your typing unless you are actively typing. Anyway, anyway, but let me just go through this flow. So yeah, like I said, record with OBS. Then when it's time to edit, I bring all the videos into the script. Oh no, I don't because it crashes if I do that. So I built a custom FFmpeg script, which joins all the clips and then I load it into the script. It does a good job of transcribing. Then I remove all the silence and gaps, which is good. Remove retakes. It does an all right job of this. It's fine. Then I remove filler words. Then it's prep for editing. I do the edit by text. And when that works in the script, it's amazing. But a lot of the time it grinds to a halt and my MacBook just becomes laggy. And so then I go to the web version and then it does the same thing. Uh, I make a little intro montage, which is pretty good. The music and stock in the script is really good because you can highlight like this and then just add like text or stock video or whatever. Export and publish is an absolute nightmare. Works about 30% of the time, whether I'm downloading or pushing to YouTube. I don't make clips. I, mean, I haven't tried loads, but I'm leaving a lot of views on the table. Thumbnail, packaging, title, that's a bit of a pain. We obviously did this with the thumbnail app that flopped. <laughs> so we do need to revisit that because I do want to use it. So now let me boil that down into actually ideas that we can execute on in terms of when it comes to this video space. And if you're looking for some ideas, maybe there's some in here you could build as well. And hopefully you can see here how we're actually auditing our own flow and our own problems and then ideating from that what we can then build to solve said problems. That's the idea anyway. Let's see how it pans out. We're gonna build clips. We're gonna build Opus clips. Now I need to be mindful about what sort of product we set off on. Because if we want to do a speed build here, then we need to make sure scope is tight. So I think we're just going to go for some basic clipping that's going to take out key functions using AI. I think what we're going to do is allow a user to upload a clip and we're going to pass that to an LLM. It's going to find the key parts, the good parts that are interesting. And then it's going to return what parts we want to clip out and then use and then programmatically chop them up, stitch them together, maybe add a bit of music, but maybe that's powerful later. So we'll put an hour on the clock to get that baseline functionality down, and then we'll see if we could take it further in the video. Who knows where this will go? So there's only one thing left to do. Have my white monster. It's not actually a white monster, by the way. It is actually sparkling water. Bit weird, but it's, <laughs> I quite like drinking sparkling water out of a can, so we're rolling with it. I said we we're going to do a speed build, but 
I think because we're not exactly sure on the stack here, we're going to not dive into anything too quick. I guess you could still call it a speed build because it's already 3 p.m. But we know that there's one place we can always start our builds, and that is a good friend, Convex Chef, good friend of the show. So let's get a prompt in, and maybe what we'll actually do for this is do a pre-baked prompt. So let me go to ChatGPT or Claude and get something spun up. Because first off, this dude on Twitter was telling me about some best practices for FFmpeg cutting and stuff. So I'm just looking into that and then I'm going to get this prompt cooked up. So I think in vibe coding in general, it's always good to measure twice, three times, four times, five times, and then cut once. And I think this is a good example of planning our attack, our tech stack, and then we're going to have a lot more success basically once we do that. Okay, so we've got Remotion, we've got FFmpeg here. So we are not recording because it's frozen again. Okay, so we've got Remotion, we've got FFmpeg and we're just trying to establish how the pieces fit together. So we've been jamming with GPT and we've also been looking at our local project that we've been doing some programmatic editing with. So I think we're gonna do a Remotion FFmpeg hybrid. Remotion uses FFmpeg anyway, so, you know. We're doing our investigation. You gotta do this. If you just go into vibe coding projects, just blindfolded, sometimes it can work, but sometimes it's, you, you're gonna be much better off and if you have a bit of an understanding of what's going on. Okay, so let's jump in to Convex. I'm building a Convex app for video editing. Users can upload a long form video, create multiple clips from it by defining. Please generate Convex schema. Let's enhance the prompt here. Did that do it? Okay, let's give it a spin. Good luck, have fun. So yeah, it looks like the hybrid approach is recommended all around. And another tip here, which we've done in a few of our videos is trying to use a few different LLMs to get different opinions and then throw them all in the mixer, see which one comes out on top. And then because we will be using Remotion, we can do a lot more post-processing. We can do a lot of fun stuff with the clips, with the videos after, which I'm excited for. So we'll do some more builds with that in other videos. So we're gonna start stacking a few of these on top of each other here, which I think will be cool. Okay, so here's what we've got in Convex. So let's sign in anonymously. I think it's just set up the table and stuff. So we can see the database here in Convex. Only author counts for now. Okay, so we're also gonna add in, right now we've just got some basic screen and auth set up with the schema. We're also gonna try and add in the upload functionality now. So let's see how that does. And then I think we'll bring it into Claude as we do. Oh, yeah, okay, so we actually opted for a simpler prompt here with Convex and we've got upload working. We've just hooked up OpenAI to actually do the generate AI clips and Convex Chef just has a way of doing a really good job. So we've just been doing some vibe coding here. We've got our clips generated so we can see from the logs here that we've got all our uh, AI stuff. So this is within Convex. So we've got videos being uploaded and we've got clips as well. So we can see here in the logs, these are all the AI calls. Is this recording? Yes, it is. So yeah, we can see all the open AI calls. It's gonna transcribe it and then search for the best clips. In this instance, it's just a basic thing. And here we can preview the clip that's made. So we've got a 20 second clip. So it's the export isn't gonna work, but it looks like this preview. I don't know what this has got on one minute 15. So it's not gonna be perfect, but I think now we can bring it to claw code. We've got all the foundation set up and then we can start getting fancy with some better processing. So as we're gonna just download this code or better yet, Maybe we deploy it. Maybe we try and deploy it just so it's all set up and then we can work on the dev side of it, maybe. Is that on GitHub, though? Where, what's going on here, Convex? You need to be ranking above Convex Insurance. Okay, so we've got production and we've got Fast Chihuahua. How do I actually download the project, though? I think that might be stored in Chef. Okay, team, it's time to lock in. We've got this running locally now, so let's sign in here. We've got our clips. So our user database is synced up with the Convex Chef one. We've got our test one here. I don't actually know what this manual does. Yeah. There we go, oh yo, preview. It's not got a very good hook rating because I'm just saying yo. But anyway, we've got that there. We've got the project set up in Claude. It's initiated. This is still recording, that's good. We've got Convex rules. Now we want to just work on that pipeline. So we've got a Coke Zero and it is time to get cracked. We're pretty locked in now. We're just deciding whether we want to run the FFmpeg on railway server or on for sale serverless. So basically we can't just have all the FFmpeg processing. Oh, let me turn off this 
the synthwave music. We can't just have all the video processing running on like our normal cell deployment, which kind of makes traditioning this stuff would be a big kind of technical infrastructure project with rendering, with hosting, with all this stuff. But it's not going to be today because we have to get it done. Otherwise, this hair is going to be getting shaved. And I actually need to go out this evening. So we could be in for a fun one. Or we could have a breakthrough now. One of the two. Okay, folks, we are in full rip mode. So we are now cracking on with building FFmpeg into the Convex app. So we'll check back very shortly to see how it's working. I'm hoping that this all goes well. Crossing my fingers always seems to work. Not. Okay, so we've got phase one working now. How can I test phase one locally? Next step, phase two, add storage, upload integration, upload process clips back into Convex. And then for phase two, hopefully. So what I love about, one of the things I love about Claude Code, who by the way, just casually announced they raised 13 billion. And what I love is that we can have these terminals running. So it has access to the Convex logs and any other server logs here. In this case, we've got this other server running. So it can run its own test and then see the output. And then if the output breaks, which it will do, it can then fix. Nice one. Hey, okay, so this has been cooking for about half hour now. Phase two, real-time progress updates. Okay, did we do this? Okay, looks like it is having a few issues speaking to getting between the server and combat. So it's just churning away right now, doing some debugging with lining up jobs and stuff. Because right now, when we come in, when we click queued, it creates the job, but it doesn't actually create the clip. So it's finding the clip. Oh, something's going on here. Did it work? Maybe. Did we record that? Yeah, we did, believe it or not. So if we process this one now, we'll say process and start. This may take a few moments. Okay, cool. I think it just worked. Process and started. Okay, but we're in a decent spot. We have contact. We have completed that. These are all queued now. Okay, team, here we are. We've done it with a new video. We've been grinding through a bit of debugging, but if we process here, you'll see that it does get queued. This one did work. It looks like this one's stalled again. So it looks like the first one in a project works. Let me show you. So we'll create a new project. We'll upload a video file, this one, and then we'll generate AI clips. So I know my screen is super messy here. And then we'll process this one. It's queued, maybe not. So it seems to work once it generates Okay, we do need to get out now, but the good news is that it is working. We're just having some issues communicating between our server and our app. So once we get that solved, we should be pretty good. It is going to be a bit of a beast to deploy this, I think. So we want to make sure we've got some time this evening to do that. But you can see here that it's just not having a great time. But we need to shoot out now, so we'll be back in a second. Oh, Joe, on the old laptop screen here. Okay, team, we're on the laptop here. It's not what I want to be doing right now. My eyes are super tired, hence the uh, hence the screen res. I don't know where my glasses are gone. Uh, but we've just we're gonna do a deployment now, just so we're not cooked later. So this is learning right here. This is learning. So we're gonna get this set up. It's working locally. I'll show you guys in a sec. But let's get this deployed. Hopefully, it's smooth. And then we can do a bit more vibe coding, make it a little bit better. But yeah, we've got FFmpeg running in the server, so we need to get the server on railway. So we're doing that, and then we're going to deploy with Vassell. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, this deployment is not going great. I've just been trying to push it out, and I said I was going to do it early. It's now 10, 17, and uh, my OBS has crashed again. Cheers. I think I sat down three hours ago, so we're just going to do a quick deployment. Getting this Docker set up. Sometimes a deployment just takes the fun out of everything. It's such a boring theme on this series. There's nothing you can really do except bang your head against the wall, fight through errors. The problem is now we've got for cell, convex and railway and then Redis, but we got rid of Redis now. So we're kind of, oh, we're really, really putting stuff to the test here. And now we're just getting constant Docker build failures after failures. And if there's any devs watching, they're probably thinking, oh, you should have used this stack. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Check this out. 8.31 p.m. is when I came, when I sat down and said, we're just going to do a quick deployment. I said, we're going to do a quick deployment and then start vibe coding, get everything polished up. That was two hours ago. We've only just got deployed to railway, all the FFmpeg stuff. It got messy and I knew it was coming. That's why I preemptively did that. So I'm pretty happy because if we didn't do that, then it would have been a bad end to the night. 
So here we go, we've got pool views here, so we're gonna start a new project. And again, I'm gonna do a bit more work on this before it goes live properly, the video, but just to show we've got this out in prod. And you know what? These are the long parts that would just keep these sort of projects on my local machine and never see the light of day. So we've done the hard bit now, getting those foundations. Now we can have a bunch of fun and make this all look really nice and be creative with what clips get created. How does the LLM pick what clips are done? Add some subtitles and stuff like that. So if you click generate AI clips, it's gonna find some different segments. So you can preview it and it will show that segment. And then what we'll do to create the actual video, click process and then it's gonna go and run that on a separate server with some interesting progress bars there. And we've got some AI scores, but again, like I said, I haven't dialed these all down. And then it's gonna download and obviously it's open in a, in a new window, but we can just download that. And there we have our clip. And like I said, we can make this a lot better as we go. We can crop it, we can zoom in, we can do all that fancy stuff. Yeah, part of me thinks a bit of an underwhelming delivery, a bit of an underwhelming end, but even though it is doing that functionality, the other part of me thinks I know how long this stuff would have taken me before. You know what, in fact, I would never even been able to execute something like this before without claw code and everything. So I know that this would take dev teams a long time even to get this basic workflow down of uploading a video, processing those segments and being able to download them. Like that workflow in itself. So hopefully by the time this video is out, we've got that a bit more polished. This is a defeated looking guy, but he's in luck because I did vibe code a few more updates before this video went live so let's go over to the app you can see all these test projects here we'll make a test project quickly and we'll upload a video we're not actually going to use a great example video but bear with us okay so now what it's going to do is going to upload transcribe and then it's going to find some of the best clips okay we've got our clip in here so now we're going to click generate clips and i think the good part here and i think the good part here is that we've laid the foundations to then build on this and we've got through that bit which felt like treading through glass getting this all deployed up and running properly with the different services with railway with ffmpeg we used to kind of a bit more of a two-dimensional build so yeah i'm pretty pumped about this and we can now have some more fun with getting better at finding better clips doing some more post-processing so here you go we've got some summaries we've got some scores and stuff like i said they're not super relevant right now but we can open this we've got our subtitles here again like i said this is a screen recording so not the best for a vertical video but we we have our subs we've got vertical videos so the foundations have been laid for pool clips for pool views we've got the pool mafia being developed so yeah pumped to do some more work on this there you have it folks cheers for hanging in there with me like i've said the challenge is getting to us We'll scratch this one down as a win for firming that two, three hour deployment. And yeah, you just got firm. That's the only way to do it. You firm it and now we've done it. And now we've got that out and really excited to build some more stuff in this video space. So this is just the beginning for this app. So yeah, we'll catch you in tomorrow's episode. And until then, all the best.